Danica and Neil, so good to see you. We are uh, so proud of the movie we have coming up Saturday night, uh, The Winter Palace on GAC Family, 8 p.m. Eastern. And uh, you guys were tremendous in it. So thanks for being here and uh, thanks for all your hard work. Oh, thank you, Bill. I love this movie so much. I'm so excited to share it with everyone. And uh, we've been having fun on social media. We've been doing these Winter Palace Winter Games and it's been really fun just interacting with the fans and seeing how excited they are for the movie. Absolutely. Thanks, Bill. It's been a tremendous pleasure. And uh, Danica, it's been a pleasure as always. The second time around was even better than the first. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So you guys were in a movie together before. Uh, Want to talk about that? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Coming home for Christmas. And uh, that was four years yeah, ago. Yeah, you have such great chemistry. And, uh, you know, I, it, it clearly comes through in this this movie uh, in, in just a huge way. There's a, you know, and you can't fake it, I think. I think chemistry is uh, is something that, you know, you, I think, from, from a viewer point of view, anyway, from a novice's point of view, it, it feels like you guys just are uh, in, in uh, you're magical together in so many ways. Oh, thank, oh, thank you. you. I, I, I mean, you can fake it. Absolutely. Right? You can fake it. We both did yeah. it before <laughs> many times, but we didn't have to this time. I'll speak for myself. I didn't have to fake it this time. We have a, a lot of fun together. And mm -hmm. yes, I think that does. I guess work. great actors can fake. But, uh, but there is, yeah. but, uh, which both of you are. But, I've uh, seen but, mediocre ones fake it too, Bill. Oh, no, really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I think, yeah, I mean, from the, from the minute I met Danica, I, uh, I felt like I met a kindred spirit. But I think it, for me personally, it goes back to a, to a childhood thought that I had, that I actually thought I was Kevin Arnold in the Wonder Years. And so <laughs> we had a whole history even before we met. Right in in your mind. <laughs> in my mind, right. Yeah, I think everyone uh, thought they were Kevin Arnold in the Wonder Years. Uh, Absolutely, <laughs> for sure. So, uh, so Danica, being an author too in in real life, your your uh, character here has uh, a writer's block, and so is uh, just going to get away and and write in a different place. Does that happen to you when you're writing? Uh, you know, okay, so yes. So Emily Miller, my character, is a romance novelist, and she has writer's block, which is why she ends up at this chalet. Uh, she tries everything, and it's kind of, it's, there's a fun montage where I'm trying to write, and I go to different rooms, and I eat popcorn, and throw paper airplanes, and I read a book on how to get over writer's block. Um, I've tried some of these things myself with writer's block. Uh, I've never tried meeting a prince. That might work really well. Um, but I've never had the opportunity to try that in real life. It worked for my character in this movie. Neil is also a writer, by the way. And um, mm. and and I, I, Neil, have you dealt with writer's block in this way? I assume you've had writer's block. I think we all have. Yeah, right? absolutely. I, I think that there is nothing more terrifying than just staring at that blinking cursor on a blank page. Where <laughs> it's just like, what are you going to say? What are you going to say? What are you going to say? That's um, right. Yeah. I think the, yeah, the best, I've never tried the popcorn thing or like making a mess around the house. I'm a bit more fastidious, I guess. <laughs> um, I have tried meeting a royal, but it, uh, no, I haven't. Um, okay. I'd say the best way is just to fight through it. You just to keep, you know, actually this is one way my dad taught me a really cool trick is if you read something you really love, his trick is to use that almost like a runway for a plane taking off. And so you kind of like read, your Tolstoy, your Raymond Carver, or your Joan Didion, and you use that to kind of get uh, to uh, to start breaking through the writer's block. But what, you know what, my I like that. I'm going to try that. My trick is write badly, just to be writing. Just yeah. write badly, and yeah, then yeah, it falls into so a different yeah. runway. But just start writing stuff. Just and sure. it can even be stream and conscious, consciousness if, right. you really, if you really have to. But just write the bad version of it, and then editing that, and then discovering the good version is oh, okay. that's the easy part. That's totally. It's almost yeah. like you're putting up the frame of the house. Yes. And I think the tendency is like, oh no, I've got to arrange the furniture and start watching cable TV immediately. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> just want the bare bones. Just get it up. No, it's going to be bad, and just do that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very true. If you start trying to write perfect paragraphs, it'll take you, you'll never get to the end. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I like that technique. So, uh, so you know, your character shows up, the prince shows up, and it's a great scene where uh, <laughs> uh, 
Hey, Danica, you're surprised by his arrival and aren't anticipating anybody coming. And uh, you, it's just a, it's a wonderful moment. Oh. So just to set it up. So my character has writer's block and my best friend who works at a property management company has a house, this big chalet says, look, we need a caretaker. Why don't you go up there for a week in between our normal caretakers and you don't have to do anything at all. Just keep the pipes from freezing up and you can write your book. I'm like, great. So I do that. Like, yeah, the wealthy European family who lives there never shows up. And sure enough, the wealthy European family does show up. And in fact, not just a wealthy family, but a royal family. Neil Bledsoe plays Prince Henry. He and his entourage show up and really ruined my whole thing. I had peace and quiet. I was going to write. And then they show up and inform me that my contract that I signed as a caretaker includes basically doing whatever they want. I work for them. And I would quit, except that my best friend is the one who set me up with this. And she's going to lose her job if I quit. So I just have to grin and bear it and take orders from Neil Bledsoe. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's, interesting. that's an interesting take on things. Uh, my interpretation is you just didn't read the fine print. I didn't. And uh, here you are, this interloper in my family home. Telling Squatting. me that I can't order you around and that you're not going to get me tea. I think you're really the antagonist of this film. Like, that is, that's that's I'm, one way to I'm look at it. I'm just a humble prince who doesn't want to be king who's trying to relax and you were thwarting me at every turn. Trying to relax. He's so bossy, but it's really, it's really fun. I, that scene was is one of our favorite scenes in the movie. Absolutely. We talked about this. And in that scene, we um, also had um, Luke Marty and Jennifer Wigmore and they're fantastic. The, their entourage and all of us have theater experience. We all have some sort of improv sort ah. of experience. And we we rehearsed that scene a bunch just on our own while we we're sitting around waiting and um, come up came up with a bunch of little fun new lines and interactions that weren't even on the page. Absolutely. Just to piggyback on that, I, I think some when when people are watching at home, what they won't quite realize is that this one big scene was actually written as three or four small scenes. Mm -hmm. so that kind of improv and uh, just creativity we were talking about was us just from the necessities of how we were shooting it to turn that from four scenes into one scene, which is really where the kind of like the actor instinct tip kicked in, our wonderful director, T.W. Peacock, yes. and our wonderful producer, Amy Carell, who always looked a little bit overburdened, but got us over the hill. <laughs> she did. And she did. Uh, it, was, it was really, really a team effort that put this just kind of magic. And that's just one example of the scenes in the movie. It's like, but this film is just full of moments like that. Yeah, another great one is when the book gets burned in the fireplace. <laughs> and, and the reactions are just, uh, it's, uh, it's it, you, you can tell that, that uh, you're enjoying every minute of it. And, uh, and it's just fun. And... Except when yeah. I'm literally trying to put fire out with my hands. <laughs> that was amazing. I mean, in that take, I was like, I'm like, oh, look, he's going, there are actual embers that he's like batting at right now. I'm like, well, that's going to read. That's going to be awesome. <laughs> that's really good production value right there. I hope Neil's hand is okay. Yeah, it's, it's fun. <laughs> It'll be okay. <laughs> It'll be okay eventually. Eventually. Anyways. Yeah. And that scene, that was, what was that? That scene had a different ending also. Um, Right? You weren't touching your face and getting soot on your face. It was some, oh, I think it was on your shirt. It got all over your shirt. Something anyway. like that. Yeah. Like yeah. I was brushing the soot and it was supposed to get all over. I think I was right. wearing a cummerbund or a tuxedo eating oysters or something like that. And it <laughs> got all over the front of my costume. And Yeah. Know. And I was supposed to say something really snarky at the end. And we just thought, well, like, let's do something more fun. Let's do, let's, and, and then you have to reset the outfit. Let's just like put it on your face. And then yeah. it, it was so comedic and so fun. Because yeah. he looked like a clown, kind of like this. Sure. It was awesome. So I thought I looked more like Wyatt Earp with like a big mustache, but that yes, that's you, Wyatt Earp clown. <laughs> great, it was great. Yeah, so was a really yeah. fun discovery. Another, another sort of change and discovery in the moment when we were shooting. Yeah, I, I, really. I mean, every single day felt like a real blessing in that way. That we were always just like. I mean, that's one of the things that I, Bill, I think about working with Danica. That's so fun is. Both of us are really, really, we prepare a lot, you know? And so like, there's no time wasted in kind of like learning our lines on set or kind of like you know, having, you know, having a discussion. It's like, we kind of know what we want to do and what the scene is. And so we're able to see what works and what doesn't. And then there's just this real joy in finding the best version of it. And that's- Yeah, what totally. and I, there's that moment where either I or you would be like, okay, so here's what I was thinking. 
And, yeah. and it was always, you always knew it was going to be a good, a, a fun, a fun solution we were going to find together. But here's the yeah. thing. And then either we said yes, or hey, and, and let's try this other thing too, to make it work even better. And, and we just had so much fun doing that. Yeah. And yeah, like Neil said, we both yeah. are, are, we study, we learn our lines, we know what we're doing. We both work with people who show up and they're like, <laughs> they're like, okay. And, uh, and you're like, wow, really? Yeah. I, one thing I want to add to that too is like I, I think for something for somebody that's never been on a film set before there's all these different departments like there's the sound department there's the lighting department there's the director department the producer department hair and makeup etc cetera, etc cetera. there's all these different departments and when the actors aren't acting they're kind of just like herded off to the side back on their, their chairs more expected to be quiet and like maybe, you know <laughs> don't wander off too far but what Danik and I would say every time we go back to our chairs like all right acting department and we get everybody around and we start rehearsing the scenes with everybody. And there's this great thing about like working with people like Jennifer, like mm -hmm. people like uh, Luke, people like Tom Rooney, who played my dad. And yes. these people all come from a theatrical background. So everybody always wants to do, let's run the lines again. Let's find something new. And like, there's just a real joy in that and like just acting, you know? Yeah, and quality content needs that. If you're going to make a quality movie, you need those moments because the script, the script is well written in and of itself, but then it jumps off the page when you add to it and you improvise and, and in the moment, you know, you're able to make those, uh, those things happen. So really, really beautifully done. Were there any other scenes that, uh, that uh, how about the hockey scene or the scene in the village where the, uh, the writer is uh, following you? <laughs> uh, and you're ducking to the restaurant. Were there any other scenes that you really uh, want to point out that were fun to shoot? Oh my gosh, they were they were all fun. I mean, we could go through like scene by scene in the movie. Um, the there were scenes that were extra fun to shoot, and there were scenes that where I watched them after and was like, wow, that's even a better scene than I thought it was going to be um, mm -hmm. because of something that I didn't even know was happening in the moment that I see later. Um, I don't want to give away too much, but there's a scene outside on the porch where uh, I don't want to say what Neil, should I say what Neil's doing on the porch? Is that a sure? Thing? Okay, sure. So yeah. He was he was doing um uh, a I was story. having a martini. <laughs> but he's having this connection with his past self, and and in the moment, I mean, I thought it was a lovely scene that we were shooting, and I then I watched it afterwards. I was like, oh my goodness. Neil is just an amazing, incredibly deep actor. He's very funny, but soon you forget like just how incredibly deep and soulful he can be. And and this scene is just so beautiful. Um, people are gonna love it. People are absolutely gonna fall in love with you, Neil. I'm not kidding. It's you, you you're so wonderful in this movie and you you go through so such a range of of emotions and um, and just versions of yourself. Prince Henry go through, goes through such a transformation. That's such a beautiful thing to watch. Well, thank you very much. What, what Danica will neglect to tell you, of course, is that there was a lot of pollen in the air that day. And any tears I might have had in my eyes, it was just a terrible. <laughs> um, right. It was, uh, yeah, I, I, I like that scene. And I like, um, uh, I think my favorite scene that we have is actually another scene out on the porch, but not the, the, the sculpting one, but the one where we're uh, with the telescope. Mm -hmm. And uh, here we first say, uh, well, we first have that quote by Shakespeare that then makes a, a reappearance. And, right, right. And, uh, and, and we probably talk about the, uh, the little prince. Yeah, and we talk about Regulus and the little Regulus. prince. And that it's like, I think it's a moment of discovery, you know, where we're not saying, we're, we're saying, I'm interested in you or I have a crush on you or I love you without saying that in a way that's just like, it's a very elegant way to do it. And there's like a, there's this, Danica plays it beautifully where there's this moment where we, then like it almost happens and you're like, oh, I want it to happen. And then it kind of like drifts apart. And um, it's, it was beautiful. And it was one of those moments that really kind of stayed with me. Well, she really changes your thinking about so much and opens you up to so many different elements that you know you either didn't have the time or weren't inclined to be involved with and i think that that's part of the the big part of the journey uh for the for the audience is going to be watching that evolution and how you know you are opened up to just a different way of thinking about things and doing things i agree i yeah i i think that as prince henry i'm 
I'm somebody that like has a memory of a place that was the only place I really felt whole and true and like, like myself. And I'm on this sort of immovable track of, uh, of destiny that is moving me uncontrollably towards what I assume is just like what I have to do. And where Danica comes in and like turns my world upside down is in showing me that I can really write my own destiny. And uh, that is, it, it's, it's beautiful and it's subtle. Um, it's, it, it's wonderful. And then of course, there's this, there's that exchange between two human beings because she just doesn't change me. I change her as well. And it's like this really nice, like feedback. Mm -hmm. For sure. For sure. Well, uh, it was, uh, it's going to be uh, a joy, I think, for our viewers on, on Saturday night. And we're so appreciative of all the hard work because the preparation is, as you just said, you two are uh, just consummate pros and, and uh, it's a privilege to work with you. We, thank you. You know, um, one of the things I don't think people realize about these movies is that we shoot them in 15 days. And so it's a very dense experience. Uh, I feel like what we experience in one day in one of these movies, you could spread over an entire week when it comes to the discoveries that we make, how scenes evolve from when we first read it until we're actually like, even, even just rehearsing it until we're actually shooting it. A lot happens in those little moments in between shooting when we're off camera, preparing, rehearsing with each other, saying, hey, what do you think about this? And then it'll completely evolve a scene and everyone's like on board and this is great. Like, wow, how did that happen so quickly? And now that's what's going to be in the movie. It's really, um, it, one, one, there's one scene, the scene in the restaurant, when we uh, first really talk to each other, it's kind of the transition scene from being just like, who is this annoying person to, oh, wait, there's a quality human being here that I might want to get to know. Neil told me, he's like, oh, this is the scene where you fall in love with me. I'm like, really? <laughs> and, and, Remember, just like 10 minutes before we're actually going to shoot this scene. I'm like, I'm like, wow, like that had not occurred to me. And uh, and we, we were sitting there trying to like rehearse it and make it that, right? So we're sitting on this tiny little table crammed in the corner at the back of this restaurant while everyone's running around with equipment and setting things up as they always do. And you're like, okay, just take my hands. We're, we're holding hands, right? And it's this intimate moment where we're, we're discovering the scene. And then this um, really friendly PA comes to bring me tea. And we're like... Where, you know, where you, you kind of hope that if somebody sees you're in the middle of this intense rehearsal that you're not going to be interrupted. But he's like, here, here you go, here you go. And he like puts it in the middle of where our arms are. <laughs> yeah, our hands are like this and like, yeah, he's like he right puts, in the middle. He's like, like, you know, it's like, doesn't see anywhere else to put it. So he just puts it right there. And, and it was hilarious. And I burst out laughing. It just, it, I mean, it was fine, but it's just, it's, it's just sort of, it's a, a great example of how, crammed in all this is and how we learn to work within that environment and it's exciting it is exciting because it's, and so it's not shot sequentially so you know you're shooting out of order very there's, often yes there's that day. it was one of the last days we shot yeah I think it was like the second to last day that we shot that scene I, I, yeah, which I, I would think too presents challenges just psychologically absolutely but I, I think that they're the only thing you can do is make each scene the best it can be right and then there's the, because that's the beautiful thing about a film, right? It's like, as you said, Bill, w there is this great script that you start with. And that is like that one piece of art that every other department from the directors, the, the, the lighting people, to the EP, to the camera, to the actors, to props. Everybody, like, yeah. like take props. Everybody takes those, that script as their basis for the story that they're going to tell. And then, of course, the third process is putting it all together. So, in a certain kind of sense, you have to just have faith that it's going to be that you, the best versions of what you're uh, of the story you're telling are going to be reassembled later, and that's like the magic alchemy of film. I mean, that's the true collaborative nature of it, right? Yeah, and production did a great job of of uh, weaving all of that together and and uh, and really creating a high quality. I, I just want to add, just on the, on the heels of what Danica is saying about the nature of shooting in 15 days, is not only are your days packed, or you're like so crammed in and like using every available minute to, to act and get it all off the ground, but your nights and mornings are packed too, because it's like you're going to bed at like, you know, you get off work after a 15 hour day and then you're, you're, get, you're going to bed reading your lines for the next day and trying to like 
see if there's a, a little bit more juice to squeeze from the orange and you're getting up and you're having a bunch of caffeine and doing the exact same thing that next day in preparation. And so it's like, it is like this mad dash for 15 days and just like- Yeah, they're like, long days too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I like to record my lines into my computer. My son reads them with me. And, uh, and so I have them and I play them in the morning. I'll, whichever scenes I'm shooting that day, I'll play them while I'm make, making, you know, my morning protein shake and all the other stuff, brushing my teeth. I listen to myself and Draco does very well with your part. You oh, know, so. okay. Not yeah. too well, right? Just not, well, not for anything you do need to worry about, but he's, <laughs> okay, good. he's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> I do that. In fact, I do the same thing. I use an app on my phone called Rehearsal. Uh, and I do the, I do the lines as well. And it's like, it's, it's funny, actually, I find that like actually doing the other person's lines because I'll inevitably act them a lot about the scene as well, you know, because it's like, <laughs> then when I'm listening to what I, when I'm actually speaking, what I should be listening to, there's something like interesting in that, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. It's, it's really odd. Cause sometimes he's not available to shoot, to, to record all the lines and I'll do some of the scenes just by myself. And particularly when there's, three or four people in the scene I'm doing different voices to make sure I don't get confused about who's saying what it's really funny yeah <laughs> well uh happy belated birthday Danica and uh, thank you birthday was Monday and uh you're doing an Instagram live before the premiere we are okay. yes a full hour before the movie starts so four o'clock pacific seven o'clock eastern we are going on Instagram live and I assume that Neil will be singing happy birthday to me um, as he did on my actual birthday. My mom is making a cake, a birthday cake for it because she's adorable and uh, she'll be here with me watching the movie. She is uh, amazing. She's uh, the best. My mom is just the best. I'm the luckiest daughter in the world. Um, so she, she's so supportive. She's just there always for everything. Um, but she's going to be uh, here with me. And so for an hour beforehand, we'll be answering people's questions. And a lot of people are submitting their questions ahead of time which there's still time to do if you're watching this on Friday. Um, you can submit your questions by, by posting the Winter Palace poster on your Instagram feed, uh, on your grid, and then tag me so I see it and write your question in the caption. And we're collect I'm screenshotting all those as I see them and we'll, we'll answer those questions during the live and do shout outs and stuff and other things. We'll talk about whatever. People will be asking questions live as well. I'm sure we'll grab some of those. For and, sure. then and then afterwards, after after the yes, movie, we'll, yes. we'll reconvene and do another Instagram live. And at that point, I have created a little quiz, and uh, I think Neil has some things he's going to do as well. We're going to do some quizzes and for more opportunities for shout outs. Neil might be doing a demonstration of short source. I sent you something, Neil, via Amazon. You'll be getting it tonight by 9 p.m. <sighs> okay. So if you'll, when you see it, like, oh, that's right. You won't be surprised. I, I think I know exactly. What you know, okay. <laughs> yes, I do. I think I know exactly. What Perfect. Yes, he'll be he'll be conducting etiquette lessons. Uh, oh, fantastic. Princely Good. etiquette lessons of various well, sorts. I'll use between now and then to learn them. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Great. Great. Okay, yeah, so guys. Well, uh, we're so proud of this, and so proud of how uh, how you know you're uh, with us here, and and you're extraordinarily talented and just a, a pleasure to work with and great people and, and thank you so much and looking forward to doing a lot more in the future and Saturday night will be great. Can't wait. Thank you so much, okay. Bill. We really appreciate thank it. Thank you, Danica. Thank you, Neil. Thanks, Bill. Thanks. Okay. Bye, Take Danica. Care. Bye, Neil. Bye. Bye.